wondering if I could just have a moment of your time. I know most of you probably go to church, you know, pretty regularly. I know most of you have probably prayed a number of times. I know most of you have probably had a few verses of the Bible memorized. I know that's who I'm speaking to because we're in the Bible Belt. So I'm not up here, I'm not saying I know what's in your heart. I'm not saying I, I know, you know how you live. But what I, what I am saying is that there's a great misunderstanding about what the Word of God says about how man's time will be forgiven. A misunderstanding I didn't know until I was 18 years old, about five years ago. I thought I was going to heaven the whole time, but until I opened this book and read it for myself, I realized I was going to hell. Now I want you to consider for a moment that Romans chapter 10 does say if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But hear me guys, from the same Bible, from the same God, it says in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, Jesus says, many will come to me on that day, saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name done many wonder and cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And Jesus says that he will confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And iniquity means sin. So Jesus, on the last day, on the day of judgment, people are coming to him. And they're calling him Lord. And they're telling him all the things that they've done. And Jesus says that he will say to them, Depart from me, I never knew you. Ye that work iniquity, which is sin. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul writes to the church that's in Corinth, and he instructs them that if any man calls himself a brother, meaning a Christian, and he be a fornicator, meaning one who has sex out of marriage, or a drunkard, meaning someone who keeps getting drunk, it says if any man calls himself a brother and does these things, that that church should expel them from their midst because they're a wicked person. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it says, Be not deceived, implying that many are deceived. And that's what I'm saying to y'all today. Many are deceived that get drunk. That, that smoke weed or have sex with girls or go to drinking parties or gossip and live in gossip or jealousy and pride and selfishness and they tell themselves that they know in their heart they're saved because they were told that they if they believe they'll be saved but God says in his word he defines saving faith from false faith and the kind of faith that doesn't move you to be a new creature that's free from this kind of character and free from these sins is the faith of devils, the Bible says in James chapter 2. The faith that acknowledges that God exists and even trembles, but it doesn't follow God. According to James chapter 2, that is the faith of devils. So if you today have a faith in God, a form of faith, where you acknowledge He exists, or you acknowledge that He is the Savior of the world, but that faith does not move you to be free from the character, the binding character of envy and jealousy, even covetousness, and incontentment with the state of your life. Where you look to other people to take what they have, or want what they have. 
guys, this is a drastic redemption that God has done through Jesus Christ. Where He makes you a new creature. Where all things pass away and behold, all things have become new. That's the salvation in Christ. Grace, according to the Word of God, according to this book, is not grace if you use it as a license to sin. That's not God's grace. God's grace is pardon from sin and empowerment to live a new life. If you think that you have the forgiveness of God, but you don't live a life that's separate from the world, you do not have the forgiveness of God. Because the forgiveness of God is there to reconcile you to the living God, so that nothing is between you and Him. And then once you're reconciled to Him, He puts His strong hand upon you through the resurrected Christ living within you. And He causes you to live a new life. A life that's described as a narrow way that leads to life. And few there be that find it, but broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go thereat. Guys, the salvation, the forgiveness that's in Jesus Christ is there to reconcile you to the living God. He takes the law of which mankind naturally hates and which mankind naturally does not want to follow. And he takes that law and he writes it on the hearts of mankind to where it's their joy and it's their song and their delight. It's from darkness to light. It's darkness to life, death to life. God is saving those who are dead in their love for sin, dead in their trespasses, and He makes them a new creature by resurrecting His Son, Jesus Christ, within them. So, according to God's standard, it doesn't matter if you profess Jesus as your Lord. If He is not your Lord in truth as He defines it, Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Jesus says, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven.